<coughs> Mics are up. Business Express. Good morning, Lagos. It's time for us to get into business very quickly here on Smooth 98.1. And Rotus is here for Monday morning. Good morning, Valentine, Lagos, and beyond. Good morning to you as well. Good morning, Rotus. Uh, Lagos, join the conversation by sending in messages through WhatsApp. That number is 0809-444-0981. And of course, you can use that hashtag Business Express 981 to send us messages through Twitter at Smooth 981 FM. Thank you so much, Valentine. Speaking of Twitter, we have a poll. Should Business Express be extended to 30 minutes. It's a no-brainer. Yeah? Or should we keep it at 15 minutes? So please hop onto the Smooth FM Twitter page. The <laughs> poll is up. It will run until tomorrow morning. We'll announce the results and then we'll see what happens. Uh, I want to welcome Emmanuel from ARM. Emmanuel, good morning to you. Good morning, Lagos. All right. Thank you so much for coming in. All right. Real quick. Uh, we don't want to dwell too much on the markets. Uh, markets were positive. It was positive on Friday, 1.06%. But Emmanuel was still negative for the week. Negative for the week. Yeah, because there were some big sell-offs that happened uh, earlier yeah, on week. last week. Exactly. Cornerstone Insurance was our top gainer on Monday. Up by 10%. Seplat was our top loser. Excuse me. Cornerstone was our top gainer on Friday, up by 10%. Seplat was the top loser on Friday, down by 10%. Imana, let's quickly jump into our headlines here. Uh, according uh, to, I believe, it's from the punch, the federal government, or rather the CBN, they're quoting the CBN, federal government recorded an 889 billion naira deficit in the first nine months of, of last year so what, what, what's uh, making up this deficit that we're seeing for the federal government uh, for last year okay um, so first on the revenue leg um the, the federal government they had a shortfall on both the non-law revenue leg as well as the all revenue leg okay so, and that was largely due to um very ambitious um, assumptions they made in the 2015 budget uh so we saw a very we saw a shortfall on on the on the, on the revenue leg and going to the expenditure, uh, we actually saw lower implementation uh, for the uh, federal government expenditure over 2018. Okay. For recurrence, we saw an uh, implementation rate of 81%. That was lower compared to 91% in the 2017 budget. Mm. Uh, then for ca uh, capital expenditure, due to the late um, passing of the budget, we actually saw a very, very low uh, implementation rate for uh, capital expenditure. So that came in at about 24%, mm. uh, almost similar to that of last year. So that uh, based on that, we just saw um, our fiscal deficit printed at almost about one trillion, uh, one trillion naira. Right. Uh, so to finance this deficit, uh, the uh, actually um, contrary to different uh, periods where the CBN and where the federal government actually borrowed domestically. Yes. What we saw this uh, period was that uh, the federal government actually net, uh, repaid, uh, net repaid. So most of uh, the finances from for the deficit actually came from um, CBN and um, CBN financing at uh, the federal government. As a matter of fact, when we check um, CBN claims on the federal government yes. from the end of June to date, is about a 1.2 trillion, uh, 1.2 trillion naira. So okay, and see, you see, this is why, this is why folks tune into this program because we, 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 you know, reveal, th we reveal things that folks aren't really aware of. And I have to say this: I need to really spend time on the central bank's website because there's a lot of complications. But well, let's just let's touch on that point. So essentially, you're saying that the central bank has been playing a role in funding as, as, the federal government's as, as deficit, exactly, right? Exactly, okay. so, which is actually not meant, which is actually not meant to be in, right. in a recent and, and it's on the website, it's we can go in there and we can see it. Definitely is on CBN's and balance sheets, you see it today on their statements, mm. you see it today. Oh, wow, so it's almost like they're extending a line of credit to the uh, federal government. Exactly, basically, basically through overdrafts. Overdrafts, yeah. and how they're doing this is by printing money essentially, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay, but now this has to there has to be a check somewhere if they are printing more money it has to what will it show up money supply we'll probably see it in money supply yeah we? actually we see that in money supply so the actually good thing for nigeria is that our inflation uh, doesn't really attract our money supply right. inflation is more of a um, cost uh, cost push inflation mm. so we don't see that uh big effect of our uh, money uh, of, of money of money supply uh affect our inflation rates okay okay interesting stuff so anyway the gist here Federal government is spending more than it is bringing in. Yeah. So and we're still... matter, so when you when you also check because the federal government have a deposit with the CBN. Yes. So when you, when you overlay that for the same period, actually saw that um, CBN claims on the federal government was actually higher than uh, federal government the federal government deposit with the CBN. Mm, mm, mm. Very interesting thing to take a look at. And now and this is this is 2018's budget. Yeah. We haven't even entered 2019. 2019. So. 
there's there's a lot there's a lot of stuff to look at, look at there. But uh, Lagos, going forward, I'm going to try and do my best. We're going to be picking apart that central bank website and digging into some of the figures that are there because it's very interesting stuff. All right, let's move quickly. Next story, the power sector. We continue to talk about the power sector, even moving into 2019. Um, consumer debt hits 62.2 billion in three months. This is according to uh, to NERC, the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory uh, Commission. Manu, what's happening here? So the power sector. This is our own now. This is us, the consumers, are the ones now paying, <laughs> paying, <laughs> paying bills. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> So the power sector has been faced with a very big challenge over uh, over time since the period that the federal government privatized and the power sector. Mm. So what has been causing uh, these high debts, uh, high debts is uh, basically uh, non-payment of, um, of electricity bills by the uh, consumers. Okay. So what we've been seeing is that um, most we've been seeing that the the the, the, the discourse have been doing estimated bills okay. rather than giving out our meters. So that way they've been actually been losing uh, actual money that they could have collected. Another way they've been also been facing a very high debt is due to um, commercial losses that have been worsened uh, by uh, energy thefts. Okay. So that has just basically uh, affected uh, this uh, this power sector. So currently now the power sector is actually facing very very significant liquidity uh, liquidity issues, and as I mentioned, that is partly attributed to uh, non implementation of um, cost reflective tariffs, mm. high technical and commercial losses, which has been which has been worsened by um, uh, energy thefts. As well as um, consumers' appetite to payment of electricity bills, most people feel that I'm not I'll, getting light. I'm not getting yeah, light. So why should I pay for you it? Just bring an estimated bit to me. <laughs> I don't know how you got it. So as I just resorted into uh, this uh, um, um, pressure. <sighs> we have the, uh, the, the the problem never goes away. One of the solutions I've I've heard so many. Uh, they should float a bond to try and increase liquidity in the sector. That's for the value chain. What, what are your so, thoughts? Where, where else can we go on this? Presently now, the, most of these investors that uh, that most of the investors of this discourse. They are not willing to uh, actually put, put, more, put more money into the right. discos because they've not been really been making uh, much out of much out of it. So what I feel they what I feel they can do to this power sector is one they should review uh, the MITO just to reflect the current economic uh, reality. So the tariff has to go up. Yeah, ex exactly. So people have to pay more. Exactly. Uh -huh. more okay. Tariff. Okay. And secondly, is uh, rather than doing this estimated building, why don't just just give out um the meters. meters. So every every electricity that we consume will be accounted for. You easily get your money from your money from this mm. simple. So mm. while that is a, sounds like a fantastic idea, they, they think well they say they can't afford this. So I know. See, that's, well, the, that's the problem. problem. Uh, we're we're owing where we are now. Oh, okay, sorry, you're talking about the meters. Yes. Oh, yeah, well, the meters are not made here. We have to import. Oh, definitely, we have to import it. And so that cost, I think, has to fall. Now, the discos and government have been going back and forth. So, who has so to who cover it? Who the bronze? But yes. is it, Mala, is the discos? I think the discos that should be the ones who fund it because they are business. It's you that's charging people money. So, they went into the business. They went into the business. This was not told. Egg, oh, gosh. They did not reveal this problem. So, we have messages there. Ah, okay. Bringa Kamo said uh, an editorial in Punch today actually took a look at that one. He said that it alleges, according to the GMD, as Mekanti Barrow, that there had been no turnaround maintenance on refineries in the last 42 years. No. <laughs> so where, where did all the money go? Right. I mean, got it. He, oh, said. he also adds Nigeria's financial affairs is murky. Government uh, never really tells us how bad it is. How can they pay the new minimum wage? Just, just depressing. That's another. In fact, you know, I think we'll get to that one tomorrow. That's a very interesting, uh, interesting talk. Um, okay, Imano, how much time do we have? Uh, Valentine, a few minutes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Real quick, I should stress here. This headline is coming from Business Day. Okay, because we don't want any wahala. So, <laughs> the after what happened to Sky Bank, after what happened to Diamond, naturally people are gonna start asking questions as to which bank, other bank out there, could be in trouble. So once again, this is coming from Business Day. <coughs> Sorry, Imano, you okay? Okay. Yeah. Unity Bank, next for bankruptcy or possible takeover? Once again, this is from Business Day. Emmanuel, up to you. Emmanuel, what, 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 what do you think? It sounds like it's choking, <laughs> choking from that. Of, I know, right? So, this is coffee was I mentioned. Unity <laughs> Waterman? Actually, I have a different opinion concerning oh, okay. this. Okay. So, we see Unity Bank, they've actually, they actually faced a similar pressure most uh, banks face uh, in, in 2016. Okay. Following the oil price crash, uh, we saw bad loans actually um, overshoot. Mm. So, uh, before the end of 2018, uh, Unity Bank, they had a, a non performing rate ratio of about 50%. God. However, Towards the end of the towards the end of the year, yeah, they cleaned up their loan their, their loan books. Okay. So currently now their NPR ratio is about zero percent. Okay. Okay. So currently now what the bank is doing is that they are working with um some foreign investors to inject a new uh, equity or equity into the bank into the bank. Okay. So I think they are they mentioned that they are actually planning on getting about um two hundred seventy billion naira. Uh, towards the end of uh, each on 20, each on 2019. Okay. So with their loan book uh, cleaned up, 
So I feel that Van is still on the track on uh, on st- on being on, on doing business. I don't see them uh, get having any trouble. Any any trouble? For okay, now. cool. Uh, once, see, once the capital actually comes, comes in, in, yeah, then they will go forward. All right, see, that's that's why we look at this stuff on the show. So awesome. Emmanuel has a different opinion. Objective point think, uh, of view. Exactly. Yinka sent this one. He says, so it's possible all of those federal government uh, that uh, approve 15 billion naira for ASU federal government approves this or all of that could possibly be CBN ask the prince more money mm. and say 15 billion naira uh, to was to give ASU or was to be given to ASU. <laughs> <laughs> Even though that sounds somehow, somehow, then they ask Oga Bismarck and his goons to look for alternative source of 30,000 air maintenance. Inka, that's why my uncle, though. Let me call him goons. <laughs> he said, why is it hard for Nigerians to obey simple economic principles? Now, wow. It's a good question. Uh, Papi K says, wrong move that uh, five companies producing meters back home. Rackets is the name of the demon here. Mm. These calls are never ready. Mm. And then a message from Benga Kamu says, Unity Bank has many lives. They will survive. <laughs> and Rainmaker says, good morning to you all. And uh, he says, up, up Nepa. Well, so UA that owes Nepa, whatever it's called in that area. I was hoping we'll hear about some economic issues raised by some of the gubernatorial candidates in the mm. fast growing economy in West Africa, Lagos. <laughs> anyway, stock page for us. Stop. Okay, stop. If I talk to Emmanuel about this, Emmanuel, you still, you haven't, uh, you still guys aren't ready to, to give any stock picks yet, right? With the way see, the... No, we see, we see, we see good. So on this, on the banking sector, the likes of on the one bank like uh, GT, yeah. Zenit, they are still very strong buy to us. Okay. Uh, for the tier two guys, Fidelity Bank, she also a very, very good buy. Okay. And over to the cement sector, uh, Based on um, current um, pricing, so we have the likes of Dank, Dank Sim as a um, as very strong buy okay. presently. Yeah. All right, remember, uh, please uh, do your due diligence. Talk to a brokerage service like ARM before making your stock picks. Thank you. We'll get into the gov- gubernatorial debate, economic promises, everything tomorrow. Also, mm-hmm. the minimum wage committee and all that. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys so much for your message. Emmanuel, ARM, thank you so thank much you for joining us. Thank you, guys. Right. Lagos, thanks for listening. Uh, coming up next, Lagos, you enjoy some great music uh, from Clay, Ruby Gian, Chrisette, Michelle, I- I- Beji, and some others. And remember, 7.30, we'll bring you the flagship show. It's called Freshly Pressed 981. Detailed analysis of our newspaper stories. And do not forget to send us questions for Kings in the Morgan. We'll send it to our, on our WhatsApp Ooh, and number. Send it to 0809 444 Thank you. He's coming in today. Yeah. Blast that guy with questions.